in this program uh, basically in this uh, uh, lecture i will be talking about the soil moisture dynamics uh, in the root zone that means basically the root zone is in a very important uh, uh, part of a hydrological cycle because when we grow crops okay so uh, the plants need water for their survival so this water is taken by the roots okay and it is given to the leaves which use it for which use which use this water for photosynthesis so for evaporating needs okay so <clears throat> We know that roots are the, actually the life of the of any plant. Okay, if the roots are healthy, okay, so the plant or the crop will be very healthy, and you get very good yield. Okay, so basically the root water dynamics, okay, is an important topic for, uh, <clears throat> and also it is also an important topic for managing the irrigation. Okay, so usually in India. Okay, and in other developing countries or the underdeveloped, okay? because we cannot afford a uh, uh, <clears throat> lot of money for drip irrigation and other uh, advanced uh, irrigation techniques where you can uh, uh, where we can apply water efficiently. Okay, so we need basically uh, our most of our farmers they use because they are not that rich, so they use surface water irrigation. That means surface uh, methods, like that means I dump water on the field, okay? So with that, basically we are giving more water. mathematically okay and uh, how good are these more uh, mathematical models in the field okay so we have done a lot of experiments okay on different crops and see how our models uh, uh, work okay uh, by comparing our model results with the uh, field uh, testing okay so as we know that basically all the roots okay they are they actually they are in the uh, unsaturated zone because the uh, roots require oxygen for their survival. So if the root zone becomes fully saturated, so they die because of lack of A. So we always see that the root is always in the unsaturated zone. That means basically there is certain amount of water. Uh, a is also required for root survival. Okay, otherwise. If the water table, especially you, you must be knowing what is water logging. Water logging is the phenomenon where the groundwater table comes almost uh, uh, reaches the root water zone. So then uh, the plants, uh, the roots will die. Okay, or you, they may not die, but they will not be healthy. Okay, so which affects the yield of the um, crop. Okay, so. <clears throat> As we know, okay. Yeah, color. Hmm? Yeah, 
ये पेन Ports are partly filled with water and partly with uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, air. Okay, so when the roots are present, okay, even if is uh, in a, a predicted based uh, formulation where uh, this is basically the vertical flow okay k is the uh, hydraulic conductivity h is the predicted in a in a predicted that is the vertical coordinate and c is the soil moisture capacity which is equal to d theta by c h d h okay so this actually we have uh, the derivation of this we have seen in uh, previous uh, uh, lectures okay so i'm not going to so basically this is the equation which governs the soil moisture movement in the root zone or in the unsaturated zone okay so now if i have a plant root in this unsaturated zone so we need to add what the root does okay so that we do it by adding the whatever the amount of the, whatever the water the, the, the root takes as a sink term in this equation okay so what we do in here is uh, <clears throat> here so basically this is the inflow minus outflow and i uh, put it as a sink term that means basically it is an outflow from the unsaturated zone so it has a negative side so this s is what we call it as the amount of water which the root water roots will take okay so if i solve this equation so we can get uh, uh, the soil moisture status in the root zone so obviously if we see that this s depends upon uh, the root characteristics and also the time so when we grow a crop we know that in the beginning because we just put the seeds okay so there will not be any roots okay so this term will be zero okay so on uh, as the as the root grows okay uh, as the plant grows the roots will be going down okay so and this term will come into effect okay and with this if we solve this equation so we will get the moisture content in the root zone as a function of uh time and space okay <clears throat> the sink term can be modeled this sink term can be modeled in by two approaches one is the microscopic approach and the macroscopic approach in microscopic approach where you go uh, <clears throat> we assume that the what uh, the flow towards the 
uh, uh, root is predominantly radial and it, it and it requires a lot of bio, biophysical properties of the roots. So and it is quite complex. So usually people go for a macroscopic approach, okay, where we lump whatever the root takes, okay, uh, as a sink term here, okay, so that this uh, this this uh, equation can be uh, solved simply uh, in a simpler way. Okay, so all these macroscopic models are mostly empirical, uh, <clears throat> and they do not really take much of physical, biophysical, and hydraulic properties of the roots. Okay, <clears throat> so we know that, and also because this uh, uh, Richards equation is nonlinear in nature. So we need a, we cannot solve it analytically for most of the cases. So you have to uh, go resort to the numerical techniques. And also we need the constitutive relationship between the regular head and the uh, nonlinear terms, the moisture content and the hydraulic conductivity, the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity. So there were many empirical relations which I mentioned in the last lecture. That nowadays most of the people they resort to this small m one condition relationship, which has been widely used uh, in literature for uh, this k theta and theta h relationships. Okay, <clears throat> because of uh, this is what the relationship. So theta as a function of h. Okay. And you have two pyramid, uh, four parameters. One is theta or this we call it as a residual moisture content. Theta S is the saturated moisture content, which is more or less equal to the porosity. Alpha V is the as uh, alpha V and N V, okay, or the Van Vanichen parameters. Alpha e is basically an inverse of the bubbling pressure, and N V characterizes the pore size, how the pores are distributed. Okay, in the soil. Okay, so with this we can compute theta. Okay, so this is valid for h is less than or equal to zero. That means pressure is less than atmospheric. If pressure is more than or equal to atmospheric, so we know that the um, moisture content becomes equal to the porosity or the saturated hydraulic uh, saturated moisture content. With this, we can also compute. So knowing H, we can compute theta. Knowing theta, we can compute the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity. I mean, this K theta, K sat is the saturated hydraulic conductivity, which is a property of the soil. Okay. And this term theta, this is a fraction. Okay. So usually, uh, always the uh, unsaturated hydraulic conductivity is less than the saturated hydraulic conductivity. So Depending upon the theta value, so we have to multiply with some fraction, and this was given by Mollen. So this, these are the two equations we can use for the constitutive relationships, okay, for solving the Richards equation. So basically, this k theta and this uh, theta, okay. Another important factor which we have, so basically with this, we can solve this part, okay, means we, can, we get the information about this part, but this one basically depends upon the plant uh, root characteristics, okay, so how the roots are distributed over the root zone, okay, so for that we have a lot of models, so the symbol is, uh, which was proposed by Mose and Remsen in 1970, what they assumed is that if I have a, a root length of, let us say, L, for the entire root length, the root water uptake is same. Okay, that means constant root of water. That means uh, we know that when we see a root, okay, so usually the root will have a very high density at the top, and as we move down, it will be having less density. So we can see that, okay that the upper parts of the root will take more water, okay, as compared to the lower portions, okay. But what this Moles and Ramsen first uh, assumed is that irrespective of where it is, so from each 
uh, every part of the root takes at this constant rate. Okay. The, then there were improvements. Uh, then this Prasad, uh, uh, he gave a linear root water uptake. That means the water uptake will be maximum at the top and that linearly varies as we move from the top of the root to the tip of the root. Okay. So then there were some non-linear models by Raju Kawas, then Voja and Roy. Okay. So there were many. Okay. So in our uh, methods, we have used this Voja and Roy model. Okay. <clears throat> so which it says like this, the maximum extraction under non-stressed conditions. Non-stressed condition means that if I am giving the crop water, the required amount of water, okay, without any deficit, okay. If I give that as an S max, okay, so the root water, the uh, the abstraction from each part from the different parts of root will be like this: alpha into one minus. Z by Z R Z whole to the power of beta. So when Z is equal to zero, so this will be maximum. That means the top portion will take maximum. Okay. And as by when Z becomes Z R Z, that means at the tip. Okay. So this becomes one. So S max, uh, this is zero. So that means basically I am, and it is very linear. Isn't it? Okay. So this is what, that's why it's a non-linear term. Okay, so because this beta quantifies the nonlinearity. Okay, in the so for different types of crops, you will have different values of beta. Okay, if the uh, root density is linearly varying, so beta may be very near to one, but you have a very high density at the top and uh, there's a drastic. So that means basically the nonlinearity in the root structure can be captured by this. Uh, this thing. Where alpha and beta are the model parameters, z, z is the depth from the soil surface and zr is the total root depth. Okay. <clears throat> and we know that when I sum it up, so uh, the transpiration uh, needs, that means basically uh, the leaves transpire, whatever the amount which the plant, uh, the leaves require, they get it from roots. Okay. So, whatever is the evapotranspiration needs, okay, is uh, met by the roots. So, the integration of this over the uh, root uh, length, okay, will be equal to that transpiration, Tj, okay, where Tj is the crop transpiration, okay, J actually here we have used for uh, uh, the day, okay. So, I started my uh, crop today. I sowed it, okay. From today, I will be measuring what are the transpirations, okay, every day. So that will be the submission because all this transpiration needs has to be met by the entire root. So we integrate it from zero to root length as max into dz, okay. <clears throat> so we can get this equation, okay. Equation is nonlinear in uh, function defining the root water uptake as given by because of this beta. Okay, for beta is equals to there will we can also simulate the special uh, cases when beta becomes zero, it represents the constant extent. That means the entire root is taking all the uh, means at equal rate. When beta is equals to one, it becomes a linear model. Okay, so. At the top, it will be taking maximum and linearly it will be decreasing the root water uptake. Okay. But if you have different beta other than this, so it will be nonlinear in nature. Okay.
transpiration as the plant grows. Okay. But clearly having explicit, uh, uh, finding out explicitly these two, we are very difficult. So usually we combinedly measure it or my compute it as the evapotranspiration, isn't it? Okay, so evapotranspiration is basically the, the summation of the transpiration from the leaves plus the evaporation from the bare soil, okay, which is underneath the uh, leaves, okay. So there are many uh, models so to compute this, uh, the potential evaporation or the reference crop, so there are, if I want to know the evaporation from actual evaporation from a crop, okay, on a given day, actually there are three steps. First, we have to find out what is the reference crop evapotranspiration, which we call it as, which we denote it by ED naught. So usually this we get it by the meteorological variables. It doesn't depend upon uh, any, so basically knowing the, what is the minimum temperature? There are many, there are many you know, models for um, finding out this uh, potential reference crop evapotranspiration. Okay. Uh, the most important one is the uh, Penman mantle, which has been very widely used. Okay. So it basically we will be during the crop growth period, we will be collecting the meteorological data. Okay. Like what is the minimum temperature? Map? Let us say I'm, I'm growing wheat, okay, in this area. So for that, what is the crop option? I have to multiply the reference crop of transmission to get the potential evaporation for that crop. Potential crop evapotranspiration means if I am supplying water sufficiently without any deficit, okay, this is the rate at which the plant will transfer. The water which we give may be ET naught is usually applied by Penman Montier, okay, uh, which uses meteorological data such as maximum and minimum temperature, relative humidity, sunshine hours, and the wind speeds, okay. Once we get this, the soil evaporation is obtained in terms of the LAI. LAI is basically we call it as the leaf area index, okay. So the portion of the area covered by the leaves, okay, as compared to the total area, okay. So basically, in the beginning, LAI will be zero, okay. So as the plant grows, you will have leaves. So basically, it will make a canopy, okay. So the LAI goes on increasing till, it's, till it, the crop becomes mature. Afterwards, once the, after it, it, it becomes more or less constant, okay. So with this, we can compute the soil evaporation, okay? From this, we can compute what is the crop transpiration. So 
there are so this tj which we are computing so that will go into that will be used here so i get the crop evapotranspiration from the metallurgical data multiply that with crop coefficient okay then i separate how much is the evaporation okay knowing the area so then whatever is the remaining so i will be using this as the transpiration okay so this is possible only if we are supplying water at the potential rate that means there is no deficit in the water okay but if there is a limiting if i am not uh, giving the water as required okay there will be a reduction in the evapotranspiration okay so that we model it by multiplying this s max which is the potential which the plant takes by a factor f of h which depends upon the pressure head in the soil surface so usually as long as your pressure head we know that they are negative okay so as long as they are in this region it will be taking it at the potential rate okay if it is in this region there will be a reduction and also here also uh, some reduction will be there okay only in this okay so that function we can put it basically a function of it is not psi actually misprint it should be a h okay when zero is less than this h should be ha that means basically here what happens is there will be anaerobic conditions okay so the plant won't be able to take okay so here this is the one which uh, between hfc HFC is nothing but the fuel capacity. Fuel capacity. No. See, whenever we saturate a sample, okay, so and we allow it to dry through gravity okay so most of the water will go but still there will be some water this water is held in the pores against gravity okay so the moisture content at that point okay is called the field capacity basically field capacity gives us an indication that whatever you are giving more than this cannot be used by plant that will just basically will go down to through gravity that is i am fully flooding my soil okay so after some time most of the water will go due to gravity because it will not stay in the root zone okay and whatever is remaining that will be taken by plants okay so the field capacity whatever uh, this hf whatever water you are giving above this field capacity cannot be used by plants it simply goes down okay similarly we know that uh, <clears throat> what is wilting point the wilting point is the moisture content at which below which the plants cannot extract water from the this so i have to maintain my moisture contents of course we cannot go just up to this so we will be putting a little more than the field capacity okay so we have to maintain our of uh, moisture contents in the root zone between these two okay then the plants will be healthy okay <clears throat> if you are giving more so that is going to be waste if it is less than h of uh wilting point so the plants will die okay so we have to see that in the root zone so this is basically so this is the uh, so we can add this function okay to our say our this term sig term okay sh so because uh, we know that this equation the governing equation is a um, basically unsteady state solution so we need initial condition the boundary conditions for it to solve okay so the initial condition is basically what we give the Either the moisture contents, okay, or the pressure heads, 
because measuring moisture contents is much easier. Okay, so we get the moisture contents and we convert that into the heads by using the Van Gunnichen Millimeter shape. So throughout the root zone, what are the initial moisture contents when I start my irrigation? Okay, in the, when I sow my seeds. Okay, so that is the initial condition. Okay, <clears throat> then what will be the boundary conditions? The boundary condition is we know that the top is the boundary. Okay, whatever the processes which is occurring at the top. Okay, so will be the top boundary condition, and at the bottom, so we will have. So the upper boundary condition that means basically at the ground surface, we know that, okay, so when there is no rainfall, there will be an evaporation from the soil and when there is a crop, there will be transpiration from the plant. So at the, two, so during irrigation, okay, so when there is no irrigation, so I will be making this, the top is, is equal to ES. ES is basically the evaporation from the soil, okay, uh, which we will be getting from the meteorological data. From meteorological data, we get evapotranspiration, then we subtract the transpiration to get this ES. So that will be the boundary condition at the top when there is no rainfall, okay. So when there is a rainfall or irrigation you are giving, Basically, water will be infiltrating into the soil. So, we have to change the boundary condition from that to uh, an infiltration boundary, so which can be either constant head or a rate at which we are giving water. Okay. So, that's what uh, we can do it. So, this is at the top. Okay. At the bottom, so we can have two. If you have a shallow water table, okay. So, then we can give that at the water table pressure is zero, but if the, <clears throat> if the, water, ta if the water table is quite deep, we, what we assume that at, at a certain depth below the root zone, so the water will be moving through gravity and we give a uh, gravity, free gravity drainage condition at the bottom. So basically we will have we will characterize the top of the root zone. We will be giving infiltration of the evaporation rates. At the bottom, we will be giving, okay, the gravity drainage mostly, okay, because most in most of the cases, uh, except in few conditions, the water table is quite below, okay. If water table is very near to uh, or the root zone, then it will uh, it will affect the crop yield. So that's why we try to see that, okay, it's quite low. So we can solve this equation, okay, uh, because we cannot solve it analytically. There are many numerical methods so which can be used for solving this. Uh, here, uh, in most of my students, okay, they have developed their own or course uh, based on uh, the procedure given by Celia et al., which is a mass conservative mixed-based implicit finite difference scheme which is quite mass conservative. So what we do is we divide this root zone and a number of segments, okay? And we will be for each of these segments, how much it will be taking, okay? From the root zone, so which depends upon the transpiration, okay? So, and we will be solving this, okay? We can solve this to get this. <clears throat> So to, to solve this, we know that the soil retention parameters are required like alpha V, NV, RSTL. So usually with this, we will be getting from the laboratory studies, okay? And uh, observed initial soil moisture contents, basically there are, um, usually uh, there is, so there are equipments called TDR, time demand reflectometer on the soil moisture probes, which can give you the moisture content, okay? Then saturated hydraulic conductivity, usually in the field we use Gulf permeometer to get this. And the crop parameter, these are the basically the soil parameters which is required for simulation. And the crop parameters is the, what is the crop period, leaf area index, the root length, days of irrigation when you have a right irrigation also, uh, what is that uh, rainfall and the crop coefficient, okay? 
So this basically this all this you have to do the experiments to get this. Okay. So on the meteorological data for getting the uh, uh, reference from for transpiration. So we have done a lot of experiments. Okay. For several years. Okay. So basically this is the variation of leaf area index we have done on four major crops okay which are grown uh, near Lurki. Uh, one is wheat, bersim, maize and farm millet okay so this was done by one of my PhD students okay he is now a faculty at IIT Roper okay so this actually uh, this uh, bersim is basically a fodder crop okay so which is grown for uh, around one, 120 days but what happens is we, we, it is used to feed cattle okay so in between we will be actually cutting the crop okay that's why the leaf area index increases then again when you cut the crop it comes down and again it grows that means in a typical growing period you can have three cuttings okay. so because of that this LEI is varying okay so for others the LEI increases, okay, up to maturity. Once the start, or once the uh, leaves become ripe and they start uh, flowering and this thing, so the leaf area index de decreases. When, when the seeds start coming up, okay, so the leaf area index will go down. So this is the way the leaf area index changes for other crops. It, it starts with zero, it goes to a maximum, then it goes down okay so this is how the root length varies okay over a, so the root root uh, root length also so up to the maturity it will go on increasing after that it stops okay so it it, it becomes almost constant okay there will not be any further growth of plant so this is also required okay and with this information, okay, we can model, we can solve the governing equation, okay, <clears throat> to get the soil moisture status in the root zone, okay. Initially, we have started this, so the plants have started taking moisture from the root zone, so the moisture contents become less. Then we again we irrigate or there is a rainfall. So this basically this histogram shows the uh, rainfall or uh, the irrigation events. Okay. So because now we are because it's a surface irrigation, so there is a sudden increase in the moisture content. Okay. So then again, so like this, like this. So our model. So these are the all these dots show the. Uh, what is that? The experimentally observed moisture contents in the root zone, whereas this solid line shows our model predictions. Okay, at different depths in the uh, this is at 20 or uh, 20 meter, uh, 20 centimeters, and this is at 100. If you see here, you can see clearly see the variation in moisture contents. Okay, is quite varying at upper parts. That is 20 centimeters, okay, as compared to the, or the or, uh, what is that, uh, at lower depths, uh, at deeper depths, sorry, at deeper depths. This is because, why? Because the, the root density is much more at the top, okay, the root activity is much, much more at the upper zones as compared to the lower zones okay because you have a smaller uh, density at the bottom so because of that so you will have a less variation here but at the top so you have a very uh, <clears throat> the same is the case uh, for mercy okay so i have we have we have given this so basically, I, it's uh, it, it, all these uh, plots show that the numerical model is quite uh, capable of capturing the uh, soil moisture status in the root zone quite well. Okay, 
So, so this model now we can be used effectively for efficiently uh, um, <coughs> schedule our irrigation. Okay. So we know that when we do irrigate, okay, so we have to maintain that between the field capacity and the melting point, a little more than melting point. So at what intervals I should irrigate so that I save some water, but at the same time, it doesn't affect the uh, yield of the crop. Basically, evapotranspiration is an indication of your yield. Higher the evapotranspiration, okay, higher will be the yield, okay. So, your evapotranspiration is basically if the if the plant is not growing well, that is indicated by the way it takes the evaporation. And that means evaporation process will not be very good for crops which are not healthy, okay. For, for crop to be healthy, the evaporation should be at its maximum, okay, at its potential rate, not maximum, at its potential rate, which will be possible only if we have, it has enough moisture in the root zone to meet its requirements. <clears throat> and nowadays, of course, even in India, it has just started because of, now the treated water is also being used for irrigation nowadays, okay. So we know that the treated water, okay, even though it is treated, it still contains a lot of salts, okay. Basically, it is more saline, okay, as compared to the irrigation water which we use from surface water uh, source or the groundwater source, okay. So when you have a water which is saline, which we are using for irrigation, okay, so the salinity of this water, okay, will affect the root growth, okay. So it will affect the roots health, okay. So the main problem uh, is that, okay, uh, the roots in the presence of salts, okay, they cannot take water as it could take if there were no salts in the, okay. So the amount of water which the roots will take okay will reduce because of the presence of salts in the water and the soil okay so because of this okay so the symptom okay the amount of water which we have made it as s max okay this is further reduced okay because of the presence of salts so because of this osmotic uh, stress response okay so, to account for that, what we do is, we multiply that with some factor, okay, F, okay, which depends upon a comprised stress response function, which depends upon the salinity of the water which you are using, okay. <clears throat> so, what we do is, we just multiply that, see, S max is, the amount of water which the root can take, okay, when I am applying potentially, okay, but if this F sign is when I am not giving full water, so that is F sign, then again another F5 is basically because of this asthmatic stress, okay. <clears throat> so this is the function which we use, okay, so as long as your phi is Less than this, above this, it is fully, okay, constant root uh, rate phase. But if the, it is less, then you have a, this thing. So this we will be multiplying. The salinity stress function works on the assumption that root water uptake is zero when osmotic pressure reaches the minimum, okay. And RW is equal to pi W and remains unaffected at critical osmotic rate, which corresponds to pi max, okay. <coughs> And also it has been observed that, okay, this, due to the salinity and this uh, in the cell water, even the plant physiological parameters also change. That means the root depth will not be the same as uh, 
what it were uh, um, <clears throat> when there is no salt in this. Here actually you can see that what we did is we 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 did experiments uh, with waters having different salinities. Okay, is 0.5 days, 7.9, 4.10, and 21.2. Okay, and if you see here, okay, as the salinity increases the root depth is also decreasing and also the leaf area index is also there. So this is clearly indicative that the saline water is doing something, okay, which is uh, affecting the plant's growth, okay. So not only, so that is because of uh, the reduced uh, water intake due to things and <clears throat> We have done some experiments. So, the, and for four saline irrigations, we have done. Unfortunately, uh, uh, when this paper was published, we were not having good data about it. Okay, uh, because we were at that time uh, COVID came and uh, we we were not able to do good uh, uh, experimentation in this. But still, we could uh, do something and we could publish this in uh, irrigation and dry, not in irrigation training. Journal of Hazardous Waste, okay, uh, journal, uh, and now actually one of my students is, uh, uh, these are the basically, see here this entire thing we were not able to get any data, but the later parts we could get and uh, and our model predicts quite, uh, predictions are quite okay, with R square becoming as 0.7, okay, at different depths. And now we are doing now with the salinity measurements also, okay. But still we have to compile this, okay, and uh, make it as a publication. <laughs> so this is what uh, 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 I have to say about this root water dynamics, okay. Basically what uh, we are trying to do is uh, to know the soil moisture status, okay, in the root zone as we grow crop from the initial sowing stage to the harvest stage, okay? So this will help us in uh, managing our irrigation in a better way, okay? But also the effect of salinity on this uh, root water uptake. So this is what I have, if you have any questions. Sir. Any question? Okay, then you can also stop here and you can develop our very Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon.